Okay, so I'm here today and I've been lucky enough to snag a ride along in a test drive of the new Neo ET7. Now test drive started just yesterday, so I'm really excited to get in it and have a look what it's like. So let's get to it. This is China Driven. I'm not gonna go over all the specs for the ET7 that are already widely available. This video is really just my thoughts and musings from the back seat of the ET7, or at least that's why I thought it was gonna be at the start of the day. I was actually lucky enough to get behind the wheel for a quick five minutes, so watch to the end to see my very quick first thoughts. Okay, so we're going now. So as you know, this car has uh, 644 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque, dual motor, all-wheel drive so there's a new mode above sport called sport plus which is going to unlock that zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.8 seconds and also this thing can break supposedly from 100 to zero in only 33.5 meters which is about two meters shorter than the xpeng p7 performance here we go oh, okay it's just a little bit. Oh. Yeah, that definitely pushes you back in your seat. Six, 644 horsepower, 850 newton meters of torque. Okay, so now we're going to Sports Plus, so we're gonna see the full bore zero to 100. Let's see this. Oh, okay, that squashes your face. <laughs> so let's have, let's have a look at the material. This is this new ratin kind of uh, recycled material here. I mean, to be honest with you, when you, it feels very, very solid, pushing it, no, no creaking or anything. Oh. <laughs> That is the open door button, so don't press that while you're prodding the car. Okay, when you get down low, there is some hard plastic, but the interior of this is soft, it's carpeted. So that means you've got things in there, they won't rattle around so badly. Now, a few people have talked about the floor height in the back, saying that it's a taller, than people expected and it and it is it definitely is your knees are definitely higher uh, than in other vehicles but it is still quite comfortable and you've got a lot of room to kind of spread out so it is still very comfortable in the back even though that floor is a little bit higher you've got a lot of space to put your arm here as well um, yeah it is comfortable in the back here Loads of light, kind of a double panoramic roof up here, like a double bubble trouble. That's not the, the best material, but apart from that, I mean, you're not really going to touch it. Nearly everything that you touch in here is really good up here on the door pillars as well. It's very soft, just like the roof, but it's in a different color. The lever in here is, feels really, really soft. Um, it is very soft. Okay, down here in the back is all the seat controls for rear passengers. You've got uh, kind of ventilation for the seats as well as heating down here and AC control. You've also got your, you know, this is all your seat heating, ventilation control. But over here as well, uh, I can pause it and I can play it from back here. So you also have some audio control in the back as well. Oh, here we go. Okay, so now I've got the, the seat going. There are two styles of massage that you can get, a more kind of wave, gentle one, which I've got going now, and a more kind of like do, 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 fist, punching you in the back gently. So there's some variation on the massage that you can have. Sure. Okay, this armrest is very substantial. It's very heavy. 
and it's a very substantial, very solid thing. Just, can I open this? I cannot. There's some couple of cup holders, of course. This is all about riding in the back for this car as well as driving it. Inside here is another USB-C. So there are two USB-Cs in the back of here. They're just in two locations. So there's one down there and there's one inside here. So here, the um, armrest is massive. Look at that. And it curves, it comes all the way around here as well. So the seats are really kind of laid back a bit and your elbow can rest very comfortably at the back here. So it's a very comfortable position. So here is the, you know, some of the underglow, the interior lighting. And Neo say you can choose up to 256 colors. So you spend a long time picking your favorite color. Mine obviously is hot pink. Sitting back, relaxing. So in the back, the comfort. That floor is high. Um, let's move my bag out of the way for a second. The floor is flat, obviously, no transmission tunnel. Um, I can't get my feet underneath the seat in front. That might be because he has it very low on the ground. But I can stretch out a fair bit. Knee room obviously is plentiful. The floor is a little bit high though, compared to what you, most people will be used to. But you can kind of get into a comfortable position. So I am 170 centimeters. That's what it looks like at the back. If I put my feet up, the floor is somewhat higher than you'd usually expect. So, I mean, the seats are completely past the C pillar. So, you know, that gives you some idea of how, how far back you sit and it is comfortable. The headrests are very slightly shaped to kind of cradle your head, but it's not very extreme. The thing is that you won't be able to hear this on the video, but the sound is like completely surrounding you. You can hear it passing behind your head from one side to the other in the car, and it's completely immersive. It's definitely very different to other surround sound systems you'll find in other cars. Can I see that in there? Can you see that in there? The speakers inside there? The couple of little tweeters inside that one speaker grill. Speakers everywhere. It's got, I mean, it's got a 23 speaker, 1000 watt surround sound system with that new Adobe Atmos uh, sound system, the new spatial audio, and it sounds fantastic. It really, really does. Now, the other thing that helps with that surround sound system is the fact that all the glass in here is sound insulated. So that's going to help keep road noise out and help keep that uh, spatial audio in. I don't know if you can see that, but that glass there, can you see? It's double layered sound insulated glass. You can hear a little bit of tire noise, not a lot, but a little bit. I mean, if you had the music on, obviously you wouldn't hear it at all. But it's coming up through in the back here, it's coming up. You can hear it down here in the wheel well. Okay, so there are four microphones in here. So even the rear passengers can talk to Nomi and that would be al allow the rear passengers to control up to 80% of the car's function. So there isn't a real need to have, you know, kind of a, a, a big kind of touch screen back here to control the car because most people will just use voice to control it. Okay, so although Neo has an English system in place now, the Nomi is not yet English. I shouldn't really keep talking about it because it just kids wants to talk to me. It's a very talkative thing. Okay. Uh, Ian would just use Nomi to turn on the seat massage function, which all four seats have in, in here. So all four seats have heating, ventilation and massage. 
Do you use Nomi a lot when you're driving? In, yes. Yeah? So if it feels you're getting too close to something, it's going to automatically turn on the 360 degree camera and it's going to show you where it feels that it's close. Which is always nice, always handy. So the actual 360 degree camera shows you how many centimeters you are away. Um, it gives you literally a number readout of how many centimeters you are away from whatever you're close to. I mean, the camera quality looks really, really good, really, really clear. And that 360 degree camera as well is stitched together really, really well. So it's got like um, what x -Pun calls see-through chassis. So you can see like if you go over something you want to avoid, then you can see it passing underneath the car. Useful if you plan to off-road. Or just drive around the Chinese countryside because sometimes there's some random stuff on the road. Okay, so the adjustments are this for the steering wheel are electric and of course it has memory function. So it's got that familiar Neo gear selector. So Ian says that the, the screen is a little bit closer to the driver, so it's a little bit easier to reach than in the ES6. There is a no home button. Oh, it's all on the screen. All oh, right, does the, the ES6 have a home button? Yes, they also yeah. have the home button. Okay, so no home button for the ET7. <laughs> yes, yeah. wheel a little bit. <laughs> mm. Okay, doing a bit of slalom. How does it feel, Ian? A little bit faster, turn around. Does it feel lower than your ES6? Like an ES6, ES8, uh, ES6, EC6 feel like they ride very high yeah. on the air suspension. Does this feel lower? Yes. Okay. A bit so although this is, you know, still a sedan, it's still a little bit higher. I mean, it's still, we've got air suspension here. Ian was saying that the driving position is somewhere between kind of like a sedan and SUV. It's definitely higher than a normal sedan car. Well, the whole car is really. Too heavy. Heavier than your Range Rover? Yes. Oh, okay. Because I just uh, adjusted the wheel force to the heavy setting. Heavy, yes. Yeah, there's not that much body roll here in the back, even though we're going from side to side. If you did that in the ES6, you'd be rolling about yeah. the place. Okay, we're going to go over some speed bumps now. Let's see how it is. Okay, you can feel them, of course. It's muted. There's no sharp thumps. I mean, these are these very kind of high, small bumps, and there's like three of them in a row. So, reversing, you've got the, <laughs> you got the, uh, <laughs> the camera. Yeah, this is what I want. I want to take the, the cross, uh, like this one. Oh. There's a lot more movement in the body when you go over them slowly. When you go over them a bit quicker, the dampening seems to, I don't know, keep the car more stable. Mm. So, I mean, these roads around here are not good, um, but it's still pretty comfortable back here. I mean, I'm not a rear passenger in a car very often, so it's not something I experience so much. I'm normally in the driver's seat. A little bit carefully, Will. Okay. This is yeah, only yeah. one. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I need to be careful because Hunan only yeah. have one. Okay, so we've got to be really quick, but we'll just have a quick... We'll just quickly go out, go around the block, and I'll tell you what it feels like. So, uh, the brakes are much better than the ES6. I said the brakes are more progressive than the e EC6. EC6 brake, I think, is a little bit grabby. So we're in the comfort mode now. It feels really good from a driver's seat. There's also thigh support here as well. Coming around, let's go around this corner. Uh, 
Okay, okay. I just go in sport plus mode, okay? Okay, so let's okay. just quickly give it a dab of acceleration. Ready, so you go. Okay. That was from like 70 to 100. It picks up very quickly, very nicely. Now, obviously I can't go any faster, but I would imagine that it feels like it pulls past 100, which some uh, EVs, they, you know, they, they start to curve off after about 100 kilometers. So they'll dash from zero to 100 very quickly and then start going a bit slower. And they go down here, do a U-turn and go back. Comfort from the driver's seat is really, really good. Visibility is very, very good. Feels really, really quite tight. The body doesn't roll that much. Sport, okay. And press the brakes a little bit. Brakes feel really progressive. Okay, around we go. Yeah. This. It's got a really clear heads up display as well that just displays this speed. Um, very comfortable. This seat is very nice and hugging. It hasn't got massive side bolsters, but it does seem to, you just seem to kind of sink into it like a nice armchair. Yeah, very muted. It's got electronic thigh support here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight-way seats with uh, obviously two-way uh, thigh support and obviously lumbar support as well, four-way lumbar support. Yeah, the view out is very good. It's very airy in here. Okay, I'm sold. I drove the EC6 and I didn't like the way that the brakes were, so I was a little bit hesitant. But these brakes are way, way better. In sport mode, the steering is, is heavy, but it's not too heavy. This is okay. Okay, let's go back. I know it's very, very short, but just get behind the seat. I'll tell you what I think later. Um, this very, seems very comfortable. It's very easy to drive, has the power, has the stopping, the brakes have seemed very progressive, and the body doesn't roll too much. So that's all good things. We we'll have to wait until Ian gets his ET7 to know a little bit more about it. <laughs> so how many test drives are you doing per day? 10. 10 test drives? Yes. So 10 hours of test drives a day? Yes, they're one, one hour, one person. Oh. Uh, let me just, let's just have a look at this. Pop it into reverse. Oh, okay, so you can have like, what's this screen for? This is a pre-production, yes, it's, not, it's not fully finished. The ET7 felt comfortable in the back. The suspension does a good job of smoothing out rough road. The material quality is high and the fit and finish seemed good, even on this pre-production car but the rear floor is too high and your legs don't get enough support. Maybe Neil will angle the seat bases to resolve this come production time. Oh yeah, it's fast, brakes hard and true and feels tight and responsive. I can't wait for Ian's ET7 to arrive and then we can really delve into it.